following program does not necessarily reflect the views, opinions, or policies of the City of Oceanside, its elected officials, KOCT, its board of directors, or staff. Good afternoon and welcome to this edition of EC Spectrum, a talk show produced by the video production class of El Camino High School in collaboration with the kind and patient staff of KOCT. I'm Semli Espithia and this is my co-host Tane Tei. I think both Semli and I would agree we've come a long way since our freshman year at El Camino High School. And while we all are works in progress, today's episode of EC Spectrum highlights some special seniors and how they are leaving a legacy and trailblazing a future. Now these trailblazers were chosen because of their first area of expertise. They had a vision, took risks, and made a difference. In today's show, we first meet Quinn Kerwin, who blazed a trail on the way to China to play football. Next, we meet Quinny Purcell, our salutatorian and a water polo player who is taking her game to Harvard. Following that, we meet all-around good guy Brendan Lopez, who believes that everyone on campus can have a best buddy. And finally, we meet filmmaker Katie Farhood, who believes taking risks and coloring outside the lines with zombie makeup is what gave her fellow filmmakers an edge at the recent Student Television Network convention. But first, let's give a warm welcome to Quinn Kerwin. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, no problem. How are you doing, Quinn? So, um, you look pretty big, man. So, how long have you been playing football? Uh, just about 14 years. Okay, okay. Yeah. What is... What about this game ignites your passion since, I mean, you've been playing it for so long? Uh, it's just the physicality of it and just you're able to go out and you're able to just like be rough with people and you normally wouldn't be able to do that and get away with it, so <laughs> that's I like. So why China? That's a long way to go to play a game. Are they hooked on football like Americans? Uh, well, we try to go to places that don't really have football there, so the Global Football Program tries to go out and they've spread the game all across the world. So. They went to Australia and Japan, and they've gone to some European countries, and then they decided the next step was China, so uh -huh. that's why we went there. I would assume you guys are bigger than the average Chinese player. Did you notice a difference in skill and size? Uh, yeah, definitely. Most of the guys there have only been playing for about two, three years, so a lot of them were just starting to learn, and everyone on our team has been playing pretty much their whole life. So. What did you get out of this experience? Um, it was a great cultural experience just to be able to go and see how people live on the other side of the world and it's like completely different than what we're used to here. Now, I know China's known for its Great Wall. Did you get to do any sightseeing? Uh, yeah, we definitely did. Uh, we got to go on the Great Wall and we got a team photo up there, so that was really cool. So, and would you, would you suggest this experience for anybody else? Uh, yeah, definitely. I thought it was awesome and along with pretty much all the guys I've talked to, they thought it was awesome too. It was one of the best times of my life. That's dope. Yeah. So, what's next? Are you going to play next year in college? Uh, yeah, I actually got a football scholarship and I'm going to be going up to Humboldt State, so I'll be playing in there. Any advice for Chris Brown in the class of 18? <laughs> uh, yeah, just keep working. I mean, Chris is going to be great and just that whole team just works around him. They'll, they'll be an amazing team. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know, I think it's great. It's great that you got the opportunity and, you know, your coach even, he's told us before that, you know, he's traveled around a lot and likes to take his players around the world. So do you think next year he's going to also do this with other football players? Uh, yes, he's already been talking to me about it and he's talked to me about trying to get some of the underclassmen to, that are willing to go to start talking to him about going. Okay, so more so about your career at El Camino, what would you say the highlight has been as a football player for the Wildcats? Um, I personally liked practice. I just liked getting up out of school every day and just going to practice and getting up early before school and morning lift. And you just like the, morning lift? <laughs> just, just the grind. I, uh, I like the grind. Is. So is there any places that you would want to go later on in life since now you've gone to Asia? Um, you know... I was thinking about somewhere in Europe, that'd be cool, but just nothing's really set yet. So. so you were telling us that you were kind of working as a coach as well as a player. Um, have you maybe thought about that after your football career, being possibly a coach? Uh, yeah, definitely. That's kind of what I want to go to school for, okay, major okay. in kinesiology and just help athletes grow and develop as players. So 
do you, you obviously look forward to playing football at Humboldt. Any other things you look forward to this year? Um, not too much. I mean, just kind of football is my life, so <laughs> that's all I do. Uh, okay. So what position did you play in high school? And then I know that usually when you go to the next level, you kind of switch positions. Are you going to play the same position or are you going to switch maybe? Uh, yeah, well, I played left tackle throughout pretty much all of high school, but uh, I've talked to my coach up at Humboldt. He said he'll move me uh, to an interior lineman at guard. Guard, okay. So I'll be playing guard up at Humboldt. All right. Now, I know that Tane was mentioning earlier that you are a very tough player and you're very strong. Um, do you have any influences throughout your life that, you know, caused you to really want to play football and, you know, really build and work for it? Uh, yeah, I had my older brother and my dad. Uh, my dad never played football. He was a basketball guy, though, but <laughs> he was always on me about telling me, like, if you want something, you got to go get it. And my older brother, he was all about football, and he would always talk to me about just how you could get great opportunities from football and how I could go to school for football and just build my life around it. Last question. Best play you've ever made in your entire career? Pop Warner, <laughs> high school, anything? Uh, it was probably in China. We were doing a screen and they said they've never seen a screen play before so <laughs> they were completely confused and we're running down the sideline and there's like three people lined up and I just threw one of them and they all just kind of fell on top of like each other. Dominoes, huh? Yeah, it ended up being like an 80 yards green play it was great. Yeah, was great. Wow. Well, thank you for joining us today, Quinn. I mean, it's great to have you in the studio, and we'll be right back after this message. Here's your sandwich, miss. Oh, thank you. And your burger. Awesome, thank you. And your bowl of boiling water, sir. YMCA is a great place for Anaya to get all her energy out, to play with friends, and have a great time. Every time I come to the YMCA, the staff is super nice, polite, they always greet me and Anaya, and they know her name, and I just feel really welcome here. What's neat about the Y is that everything is adapted to whatever need you have and whatever level you're at, and you're never, you never feel like you're not achieving because someone was always there, especially the trainers are there to always encourage you. I'm there five days a week, uh, taking either classes uh, or being in the fitness center, alternating between cardio and weights. So uh, it is just like home to me and I just love being here. I started coming here about six years ago. I've lost about 110 pounds. I work out in the gym, I come to the classes, but mostly I work out in the gym. It's been able to give me time for myself, a safe and fun place for my kids to go, a big community where I've seen lots of my other friends, uh, my mom friends, and my kids have seen their friends, and it's been an amazing experience. I love it. And welcome back to EC Spectrum. With us today, we have our Quinny Purcell, a salutatorian who also plays water polo. Welcome, Quinny. Hi. Now, being a salutatorian and an athlete takes a lot of work and discipline. Tell us what your average day is like and all the training that goes into it. During school, I tend to wake up earlier to finish my homework that I didn't finish from before. And then after school, I go to swim practice. And then I'll go to water polo practice in La Jolla afterwards. And at water polo, we usually swim for like the first 45 minutes and then we'll pass and shoot and we'll either run drills or scrimmage for the rest of the night. Yeah, that's 
In sophomore year, we read Lord of the Flies and learned the nature versus nurture argument. So we want to know, are you genetically gifted or would you attribute some of your success to El Camino? Both of my parents were extremely smart and they've always done well. And I think they definitely passed it down to me and my siblings as well. Mm -hmm. So I think that's definitely a huge part, but I've had some really good teachers, so. Okay. So what has been the highlight of these four years at El Camino? I think it's definitely just been making new friends and getting closer with the friends that I've had in the past and the memories we've made together. Okay. What was the college application experience? We know you're going to Harvard next year. Tell us a little bit about that whole. Um, Harvard was the only school I applied to actually because I committed to play water polo there before. So committing to an Ivy League school is definitely exciting and it must have been such an impressive moment. So what was your reaction? Um, I actually got the call for my official visit um, at school and I was super excited. I was like I'd love to go and then a couple weeks later after he called me when I was at a water bowl tournament and asked and offered me a spot in his team and said that like, I'm there, it's there if I want it. And he asked if I wanted to talk to my parents or even think about <laughs> it. And I was like, no, like, yeah, I'll yeah. go. Okay. We'll, this we'll, is we'll it. Yeah. So what are your plans? Have you decided on a major? I think I'm going to major in biochemistry. I know I definitely want to go to medical school after. So we'll see. Smart enough to go there. <laughs> So, Any advice for our incoming freshmen, both academically and sports? Um, in sports, just to honestly ask a bunch of questions. Like, even if you think it's a dumb question, there's always someone else thinking it. For school, too, if you're ever not sure about anything. If, yeah. There's always someone who doesn't know as well. And then just to take advantage of every chance you have to get in the pool if it's for water polo and to keep working. So... Obviously, high schoolers have this sleep, school, and sports triangle, and you can only pick two. But somehow you've managed to juggle all three and get all three. Do you want to tell us about how you've managed to just be really good at all this? I try to make the best of my time as I can. If I know in between practice I only have half an hour and I'm not going to get homework done, I'll probably take like a quick nap to get as much sleep in as I can. But I just try to focus as much as I can when I'm doing work to get it done as fast as I possibly can. Okay, okay. And we are actually also aware that you have set records in CIF, so tell us a little bit about how that's whole, that yeah. whole thing's played out. Uh, this, my freshman year, I didn't even like think about records. It like, didn't matter to me. And then I realized my sophomore year, I set our school record for goals in a season. And then everyone was telling me, oh, you're on track to break like the career record and everything for our school. And then in the middle of my senior year, everyone's like, you're going to break the CIF record. And so, yeah. I, yeah, so this year I actually beat the San Diego one for career goals and for career steals. Congrats. That's so amazing. Thank Good you. Job. Wow. So obviously water polo and swim are just a really big part of you and you're, pa you're passionate about it. So tell us what the sport is like. It's, water polo is very aggressive and very physical. <laughs> it's, um, there's a ton of rules, but everything happens so fast and underwater that nothing's ever called. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's extremely dirty. There's a lot of injuries and yeah, things like yeah. that. Yeah. Man, I didn't even know that. Um, last question. Going to Harvard, like looking forward that Harvard is in your future, do you have any anticipations? Like what are you looking forward to maybe? I'm just, I'm looking forward to being on the East Coast and trying something okay. new. Okay. Um, it'll be like the big city life for a while oh, okay. too. And just like the people there, I've met the team, they're all extremely nice and getting away from home will be fun. That's exciting, oh, that's yeah. exciting. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us, Quinny. We will expect updates from Harvard. <laughs> EC Spectrum will be right back after this message. You're doing great. Let's just, we're gonna try this again, okay? Okay. Wheels, pedals, handlebar, brakes. Sit up straight, keep your weight in the center, keep your eyes on the road, hands on the grips, button the seat. If we feel ourselves falling, what do we do? Just, just keep pedaling. pedaling. Good girl. Now remember, it's all about balance and steering. Steer with your hands, steer with your body. Steer into the corners and you stay out of trouble. And the bell's your buddy, so go ahead and ding that. All right, you ready? Here we go. Pedal, honey, pedal. There you go, you're a bike rider. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. 
My name is Andrea Lee Greenberg. I walk for Autism Speaks because my son Tyler is the single most important person in my life. Walk Now for Autism Speaks raises awareness every time a city puts on a walk. It is a terrific way to come together as a community, to reach out to one another, to get the message out that these children and these adults are incredible human beings. To find a walk near you, visit walknowforautismspeaks.org. And welcome back to EC Spectrum. Today's episode focuses on seniors who make a difference at El Camino. And one senior who makes a difference for all students is Brendan Lopez, president of the Best Buddies Club on campus. Thank you for joining us, Brendan. Thanks, nice guys, for having you. me. It's been pretty good. At a time when a lot of teenagers are focused on themselves, you are focusing on others with, with special needs. Tell us about this club and the campus. Sure. So Best Buddies is actually an international organization. It focuses on uh, people with special needs if they need a job to go somewhere or if they're on a college campus. But mostly our chapter in El Camino is actually a high school chapter. Okay. So we focus on high school students to have special needs. So what we do is we get the special needs um, students and we make sure that they're paired with another student so that they're not lonely. We don't want to make sure that they're not hanging out by themselves at lunch. Yeah. Uh, it's all about making friends at Best Buddies. That's what I was doing. Does this mean you're going to have several Best Buddy dates at the prom? <laughs> oh, maybe. But actually, a month ago, we had the Best Buddies prom at Rancho Bernardo High School. It's a, kind of a prom for students with special needs. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we took probably like five um, Best Buddy students from El Camino and mm -hmm. all around San Diego County. They came together, and we had a really good time. That's dope. That sounds awesome. So what made you become involved in this club? Because obviously, you enjoy being in it. So was there a defining moment where you said, I'm going to join this club? Sure. I had a friend that was actually, he had some mental health issues and he kind of joined Best Buddies because he wanted to have, find a place where he belonged. Yeah. And I kind of joined him. So that was in sophomore year. And I really saw the need for the program because I didn't want to see people with special needs just hanging by the wayside while everyone else had a good high school experience. Okay. And I see that when you identified that, um, what would you like to see happen with attitudes and behaviors with fellow Wildcat students? Sure. So I know a lot of Wildcat students sympathize with um, p kids with special needs at our school. But what I really want to see happen is every time you walk by uh, one of our students with special needs, just say hi, mm -hmm. give them a high five. And even at Best Buddies, we don't really, you, it's a dedicated pro process. But at the same time, you just, just say hi to them and be nice to them because they're our fellow students. Yeah. I like that. And uh, what can other students do to get involved? To get involved in Best Buddies, we meet every Wednesday in the B building, B403, next to Miss Esquivel's room, an AP okay. government teacher, if you guys know where that is. <laughs> and every Wednesday, we'll also have a new activity. Like tomorrow, we're playing a game. And you know, last week, we had like Pictionary. And there's different things that are going to happen. It's really fun. So at Wednesday, and come join us. Sounds good. So has this club affected your future goals and plans in any way? It actually has. I've decided to go to San Diego State University. I got an a Air Force scholarship there and be an officer. But That's great. with that, I'll use Best Buddies because Best Buddies actually is at San Diego State. Oh. So they have a chapter there. So I'm going to be going from El Camino. And I already have people I know at San Diego State, a couple of people. So I'm going to go and join the Best Buddies chapter at San Diego State. Congrats. That's amazing. Do you see any common thread with your desire to serve in the Air Force? Um, sure. I think Best Buddies has actually made me more compassionate mm -hmm. and it might have actually helped me um, with Air Force and getting a scholarship is because I wanted to tell them that, you know what, being an officer isn't just about following military code and stuff. It's about being compassionate, showing values and things like that. So I'm definitely going to be going with Best Buddies forward and in my Air Force career I'm going to stay in touch with everybody I've met there. That's amazing. So is there anyone who's been a great influence on you that has caused you to be more compassionate and to join the Air Force? Um, yeah, I think my mom has helped me out a bit because she works hard with that. And also the teachers involved in Best Buddies, Ms. Valetti, she is one of the um, department chairs for the special needs program. And she works really hard. And she's kind of a senior advisor in Best Buddies. And I see what, she works really hard for us. And she actually, last year, I got sent to um, the University of Indiana for Best Buddies Leadership Conference. And that was really cool. And I really thank her for that. And, all the other teachers. What are some of the promotional things that you have done around El Camino to maybe like put the name for Best Buddies out there more? Yeah. Sure. So we have spread the word to end the word day. It's to stop using the word retarded. Um, basically, it's 
not really just we're going to be forcing people. It's kind of a suggestion to stop using it because um, it can kind of be demeaning to people with special needs. Absolutely. And yeah. we actually had a sign where everybody would sign up and have their signature and put it on the poster. And we did that last month. And maybe we'll hand out flyers. We did that in like September. So just little things like that. Well, Brendan, you are such a breath of fresh air. You know, can you be my big brother through life? <laughs> <laughs> but um, thank you for joining us today. It's been a great honor. Of course, thank and you guys. We'll be right back after this. I'm wanted. I'm wanted. I'm wanted. I'm wanted. Volunteers wanted. There's a place for everyone. Nobody can do everything, but everyone can do something. Your experiences and expertise can help to advise the council on various matters. Whatever your interests are, there is a place. There is a place. There is a place. There is a place for you. Apply today for one of the city's committees, board or commissions. Whatever your interests are, there is a place for you. For more information and applications, call the city clerk department at 760-435-3000 or visit the city's website. Volunteers. 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 Volunteers are the heart of the community. Oh, use motor oil or cocktail or toxin. Dispose carefully, you've got lots of options. Never the trash, the drain, or the ground. That's insane and it ain't safe and sound. Oceanside is a zero waste city. Oceanside is a zero waste city. Oceanside is a zero waste city. Oceanside is a zero waste Recycle used oil and filters at certified collection points in Oceanside. For location, see greenoceanside.org. And welcome back. And finally, we welcome Katie Farhood, a fellow filmmaker who is part of the El Camino video production dream team who competed in the Student Television Network convention this March in Anaheim. Welcome, Katie. Hi, thanks for having me. So tell us about this competition you recently went to. So as you said, it was in Anaheim, California. It was held at the convention center. It was the largest one that they've had so far. There were about 3,000 students from all around the world, like Russia, China, people just from different states and countries. So it was really cool seeing everyone work together and just kind of come together to, for video production. OK. Tell us a little bit about what you learned at the STN. Uh, we really learned how to work together as a team with our class um, and just come together to really tell a story through our videos because I feel like we're very good storytellers and mm -hmm. we really got to display that through our films. That's great. Um, and we really learned how to work in a time crunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what was it like trying to meet these deadlines at this competition? That was very difficult. Um, for the music video itself, we only had six hours to do everything. So we had three hours to film and three hours to edit. And both of those alone are very difficult tasks on their own. Um, so doing the makeup and um, filming and everything, editing was very difficult. Um, but it, in the end, it was good. We ran down 10 flights of stairs to actually deliver the video. Um, the door was locked at the bottom, so we had to run back up. But in the end, we got it through. We got it in, and that's all that matters. <laughs> That's great. So um, I'm actually aware that Semley was the star in your film. Tell us oh a little God. bit about that working together part. That's amazing. Well, I mean, Katie's great in makeup, so she mm -hmm. did all our makeup. So we were multitasking. She was doing half of the zombies' makeup, and the other zombies were filming. So I don't know, it was great working with her and being, yeah. having the honor of being in the video. <laughs> and now that she's established herself as a filmmaker, what are your plans for the future now, Katie? Um, like you said, I really enjoy I really enjoy makeup and makeup artistry, not just like glamour, but the gory stuff, like the special effects makeup that we did for the video itself. Um, I'd really like to involve myself with that. I feel I could really make a future out of that. Yeah. yeah, I see that. Well, let's take a look at your music video.
That was Drop Dead Gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, it was great working with Katie. And Katie, thank you for joining us today at KOCT. Great Thanks video, great me. experience. Thank you so. for joining us, Katie. And also, thank you at home for joining us here at EC Spectrum. My name is Tony Tay, and this is my co-host, Semli Espitia. And we are signing off.